this, this week, week on the spotlight. spotlight the stories that touch your life and lift off they are the news stories that have touched our lives forever that we can remember from the eagle has landed that's one small step for man one giant leap for mankind most of these stories we have seen have led to disasters within tragedies affecting the lives of their friends and their loved ones. All these stories we have watched, seen, and heard across the globe had either had a positive or negative impact within. The only question that still stands, where do all of us go and still stand today, even as the future awaits us? We will take a special flashback at the most honorable news stories throughout our world's history and predict what the future holds in store for all of us as the world continues to turn. I'm David Martinez. Join us as we take a trip down memory lane to the most memorable and talked about historic news stories that have affected us like us and touched our lives today on this special edition of The Spotlight. Hello, 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 and welcome to the spotlight, y'all. Welcome to the spotlight. Whoa, we are back and better than ever. I could say, welcome to the newer spotlight. Just look, look, look at this. Look, there we go. Look, a new set, updated logo, and from new now people. on, new people. Yeah, new I was people. just about to mention that. From now on, these permanent use permanent. will now be permanently part of the spotlight. Please help me welcome the lovely Melinda Evans. Yeah. And. Oh my God. Drum roll. <laughs> and last but not least. Oh my God. Meet Sean. What's your last name? Sean Summers? Simmons. Sean Simmons, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Mm. Okay, you know, I'm clapping <laughs> myself because you know what? You guys are. Yes. Gonna, nope, you don't have to do it no oh, more. Oh, damn. I mean, oops. <laughs> you can censor that. I guess we could here. <laughs> I look awesome. Now, before we get into hot topics, let's welcome all of you first for joining us. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I want to get to know you more and just so I know Sean you've done some YC productions yes wait lately tell us about that um it's a headache you know <laughs> being I want I'm not necessarily new to this mm -hmm. but working with a team is very different for me mm -hmm. because I've never really worked with a team and me doing so I'm really stepping out of my comfort zone and mm -hmm. I'm learning to compromise with people and that is not my thing because mostly it's either my way or no way at all, you know? Mm -hmm. but yeah. And where, where do you see yourself in a few years from um, now? Right now, here. Mm -hmm. The next step is made in New York. Next and the next step is New York Film Academy. Mm -hmm. And then next step is hmm, either Paramount Pictures, Lionsgate Pictures, or 20th. 20th Fourth Century Fox. 20th Century Just Fox. be careful when you go to Lionsgate because that lion could come out as an NGN lion any moment. Hey, I'm okay. I'm, I'll be ready. <laughs> All right. I'll and be ready. So how does it feel to be on Spotlight here? What is it? You know what? It feels natural. Natural. Good. Mm. I feel good about it. You know? <laughs> uh, I'm not, you know, I feel like I'm, I've come out of my shell. So mm. I feel great. I well, just wish, you know, I could have. Be less scruffy. Yeah, it, well, it's all I'm right. You, you kind of crazy right now. It's but, all right. You, know. you still look good no matter what. Thank but it's you. a pleasure to have you here. You. And Melinda. Oh, hello. You, how have you been? Um, I've been okay. Doing a lot better. Yeah. How does it feel to be on the spotlight here? Uh, it feels really good. Mm -hmm. I noticed you did some like youth channel productions, like you had um, Police State of Mind. Tell us about that. 
Oh, yeah. So I had people from my research lab, since I'm in two research labs, mm -hmm. and basically the professor from one of them, and two of his students came on. Really? And how did that, and are you producing any more episodes after that? No, I would still like to do my show um, in August, since I'm going to be off for like several months. Mm. Where do you plan on going in the several months? Oh, I have to work for grad school, because... Mm. You know, master's students, we don't get to go to school for free, just PhD and bachelor's and associate's degrees. Got it. I think I'll show you how to teach you how to be a cashier. <laughs> yes. we, were, we, were, we were just talking about it um, before we got the show started, and I'll, I'll sh I could definitely try my best to show her a cashier. But anyway, it's a pleasure to have both of you here, and we got a lot Thank to you. talk about in Hot Topics. So we are... And it's, it's a pleasure to have all of you joining us, and we look forward to throwing out here. Now we have a lot to discuss, and this is part one of a two-part hour-long special edition. We are basically taking a trip down memory lane to the most talked about news events that have shaped us, our lives forever. We're going back to like the 1940s and going all the way to, well, today, 2017. Yep. And we're gonna begin, now I'm pretty sure we're, we've we've learned a l some certain information about the attack on Pearl Harbor, right? Where it was a it happened during World War II, so you're pretty much familiar with it, right? Or yes, they um they also made like a movie, right? With Josh Harnett, I believe, and Kate yeah. Beckins, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, they made something similar. There. I believe they aired on Turner Classic Movies, somewhat like that. But but President FDR made it as made December 7th, 1941, a date in which it will live in infamy. And they were like Japanese planes that had attacked the United States Naval Base at the Pearl Harbor, Hawaii territory. And the bombing killed more than 2,300 Americans. It completely destroyed the battleship at USS. And the, atta the attack sank a total of 12 ships and damaged nine others. About 160 aircrafts were destroyed and 150 others damaged. And the attack took the country by surprise, especially the ill-prepared Pearl Harbor base. So from hearing all this information, what do you think or have to say, you have, what do you have to say about this? Uh, do you think there could have been an action or a plan taken to prevent from this attack from happening? What? Well, Anyone could step in. Oh, sure. Well, me knowing. <coughs> Knowing that uh, U U.S. history, they like to like basically water down things and only the history part. Mm -hmm. So I think that, I'm trying to say this in a nice way, I think part of it was preventable, but the other side to it is it wasn't preventable. I think it was, you know, let happened on purpose, basically. Because mm -hmm. we do benefit from getting war because... Yeah, because yeah. it's not easy. When it comes to war wars, it's like it could take a long time to recover. And you want, and you have like the president trying to send all the troops home real safe because you never know what could happen next in case these things happen. But um, there's actually a, a, a news clip here from ABC News. And Elizabeth McLaughlin spoke to a survivor at the 75th anniversary commemoration of Pearl Harbor. Take a look. Tell me, I guess, first just a little bit about that day, what you remember from the very beginning. Uh, well, I was asleep uh, on the bunk down on the uh, lower deck. My brother was also on the ship, a younger brother. He came uh, running down. Uh, to, uh, he was a ship's cook striker, so he was up early fixing breakfast for the rest of us. So he came running down and said, Richard, there's something going on. Uh, looks like planes are strafing Ford Island. So I got up quickly and ran up with him to, to look see. And I saw the red dots on the plane. I knew they were Japanese, so I ran back to the crew's quarters, began to yell, the Japs are attacking, the Japs are attacking. There was uh, one person that was taking care of the sending proje uh, projectiles and, and uh, powder up from the magazine. He said, what do they want, target ammunition? And I used some bad words. 
But I said, doesn't matter. Just send some ammunition up. Now that video you just saw, that was Dr. Richard Van Young, who spoke with ABC News' Melissa McLaughlin. Now, what's your reaction just seeing one of the survivors still standing alive today here? And he's eight, 95 years old here. Um, well, I think that that's amazing, you know, it's yeah. very horrific. It's like surviving modern day 9-11 mm -hmm. and it'll be interesting 80 some odd years from now, you're going to have su um, survivors that came out of the towers or um, rescue workers describe their experiences. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That man lived through history. Yep. He sure he's did. Like, he's, he's already immortalized. To survive that, that's, that's a story worthy of like being passed down generation mm -hmm. to generation, you know? Yeah. Just imagine if he were still here at the 80th anniversary of, nine of um, Pearl Harbor, you know? And he'd be age 100. Yeah. Look how surprising that would be, you know? And, you know, as much as that event from the early 1940s shaped and or affected us in many ways, we move on into the 50s where there's one major event that happened in 1955 and going directly into the 60s that shaped us as to who we are all in the world. We're talking about the civil rights movement. Now, <laughs> I think he's hyped about that here. Yeah. But let me give you a little fact about it. On, it. on December 1st, 1955, the modern civil rights movement began when Rosa Parks, who was an African-American woman, was arrested for refusing to move to the back of the bus in Montgomery, Alabama. Now, the civil rights movement was a freedom struggle by the African Americans in the 1950s and 60s to gain equality. The goals of the movement were freedom from discrimination, equal opportunity in employment, education, and housing, the right to vote, and equal access to public facilities. And the Civil Rights Act of 1964 ended segregation in public places and banned employment discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. It is considered one of the mo crowning legislative achievements ever made of the civil rights movement. Now, this leads into this discussion. Do you think the civil rights movement could have still continued after their achievements? Or what do you think would be another result of this movement if it still existed today? I mean, you have the whole Black Lives Matter right. movement. So obviously it's still going on. There's a lot of work to do. And a lot of that work is going to be, unfortunately, probably undone given who is our president and given what his administration looks like. So mm -hmm. the fight against racism and sexism, that's not going to go away. That's always going to be there as long as we live in a society that established, um, established, just established, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> keep going, keep you know, going, keep establishes, going, establishes, keep establishes going. these ideas. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mm -hmm. do agree. And I feel like me personally, this is my opinion that we're always going to be living in the shadow of our ancestors. We're never going to truly aspire like the masses as much as Rosa Parks, Malcolm X, mm -hmm. uh, Martin Luther King, you know, when right now we're just, I feel like we're just uh, a spinoff of it, like the Black Lives Matter. It's a spinoff of the mm -hmm. Civil Rights Movement. And yes, it's equally important, but does it have that much of an impact as the Civil Rights Movement has? Well, that's, that's the question we all have to keep in mind here, because, you know, it is the 1960s, and a lot has happened since then. There were like many people. Exactly, who it's were the involved. 1960s. Yes. we're 2017. Exactly. Like, more people have awakened and are more knowledgeable, but yet so equally ignorant. Mm -hmm. But yet, there should be at least some change. We have time on our side. You know, yes. we're in the present. We're not living in the shadow of the past anymore. Although that shadow is still looming over us, like it is our responsibility to actually, you know, free ourselves mm -hmm. from it. Right. And there is a fact I should mention, and 
with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we all have to understand that he was a part of the civil rights movement, among others, and there's uh, Megar Evers, and then there's um, J President JFK, and then there, there was like a whole lot. But the one people who people are not remembering well or who was also involved in like the uh, civil rights movement is Mega Revers, you know, because they, he, he's the one that's very been ta talked about here. And um, one of you has uh, a fact about it. It's like just, well, just sure. tell us. Yeah. Well, you know, he was one of the American civil rights activists from Mississippi who mm -hmm. worked to overturn segregation and to enact voting rights and social justice. Um, and I also think that that's interesting because he has a college, um, I believe, named after him that's yes. one here in the city, I believe. Yeah, it's located in Brooklyn, New York, well, called Megar Evers College. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, he was assassinated <laughs> on June 12, 1963, like a lot of these leaders, such as, you know, X and, mm -hmm. you know, King. Yeah, but what? I just had a thought. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know, this is like, I know this is way, I hope it's not inappropriate, but... I just thought about when you said that a lot of people aren't familiar with this person. It reminds me, the m three main people people are familiar with when it comes to like the civil rights movement mm -hmm. is Martin Luther King, yeah. Malcolm X, yes. and Rosa Parks. Yes. I just had a striking like <coughs> comparison. It's like Superman, Batman, and mm -hmm. Wonder Woman. Right. Martin Luther King. Superman, Malcolm X, Batman, <laughs> and Rosa Parks, Wonder Woman. I don't know. I think it's awesome. Yeah. But then you have your like lesser known activists, right? Like such as Aquaman, you know, The mm -hmm. Flash, Green Lantern. I'm just saying, they're all equally important, but yet not well known. And right. I think we should make them well known. Yeah. Because we, because the thing is, we need to discuss them more. Often, exactly. so that way people can know them more here. And exactly. then there's a fact with, um, we should mention about Martin Luther King about, because you know, he was assassinated in 1968 and then there was one of the people who was involved in that with his assassination. Oh yeah, yeah. James Earl Ray. Yes. And it says, <coughs> he was a minor criminal and he basically assassinated King mm -hmm. at the Lorraine Motel in 1968. And they actually, I believe, turned that motel into a museum. Right. And then you, let's not also forget the people, there is one famous person mm -hmm. who got involved in the assassination and that was Jesse Jackson who yes. became a reverend later on after yes. that here. And I believe he was one of the first um, black men to run for president, I believe in the yeah, 80s. Yeah, he was. But then he wound up lose, losing the, uh, the vote. But he, he didn't quite win, wasn't in the presidential election, but you know, he w chose to run for president but lost and then wound up giving it to someone else to run for the office here. And you know, as much as there's a lot with civil rights have happened and then uh, there's also JFK as well who also got involved in this here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and because you know, with J when JFK was president in the sixties, he had a lot to deal with at the start. Even though he was elected president around the time of 1959 or 1960, but that was, and about around that time they had the first televised debate, debate between Nixon and Kennedy. And then all that came and then Kennedy wound up facing a lot here where, well who has, and uh, it's, it's a whole lot. Here. I do. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot when it comes to JFK. Um, like he was the 35th president and only ran for two years, but he is one of, if not the most famous president. Mm -hmm. you know, not just due to his assassination, right. but with his dealings with the Cuban Missile Crisis, mm -hmm. when uh, Americans were scared like day and night because they didn't know if they were on the verge of warfare. Mm -hmm. um, the Berlin Wall and right. the ongoing civil rights movement. You know, he was, he was all a part of it, you know, yeah. he was, I believe he was a central figure, mm -hmm. you know, in all three, but yeah, it solidified him as a legitimate president. Mm -hmm. Even though he only ran for two years, he is still well known.
throughout the ages. Exactly, because you know, there's a lot that he had to deal with when he was president, and you know, the fact of it is that if JFK were still alive today and he had not been assassinated, May 29th this year in 2017 would mark his 100th birthday, you know, and that, and that's something we have not seen with not one president yet, but it's like getting close, but it's a high unlikely situation. Though. Well, almost with that uh, Bush senior man. Yeah, H.W. Bush. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the father of George W. Bush. Now, but, oh, it, but as far as the civil rights movement has been, you know, Mm -hmm. one of the biggest accomplishments, but many people would consider this story event from the late 60s as one of the most greatest stories of the 20th century. And we're talking about Neil Armstrong's moon landing here. And well, how? Well, let's just say the eagle began its descent to the lunar surface, and that was the time they started planting the American flag on the moon. Take a look. We're now in the approach phase, everything looking good. Altitude 4200. Houston, you're a go for landing, over. 40 feet down, two and a half. Picking up some dust. 30 feet, two and a half down. Straight shadow. Four forward. Four forward, drift into the right a little. Six, down a half. 30 seconds. Forward, just. Good. Okay. Contact right. Tranquility base here. The eagle has landed. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Now, <laughs> just yeah. what goes to your mind just watching him plant the American flag um, on the moon as part of his mission? I don't, I, okay, to avoid being an enemy of America. <laughs> Let me just say this. I love this country. Yes. I love the people here. Mm hmm But I it would be it would make more sense to plant a flag of the planet Earth on the moon. Plant pla or <laughs> just a universal <coughs> flag mm -hmm. to represent uh, the entire world. To represent <laughs> us as human beings who mm -hmm. have made this groundbreaking achievement, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Do you think you could plant the, um, the Earth on the moon? No, but like, just. Well, I, just I, like, I like to see this. Because <laughs> this it would be interesting. No, we can have a universal flag to uh -huh. represent all of us, mankind, as yes. a collective being. You know, plant that on the moon. Because doing that, yeah, it might be an American flag, but to me, it shouldn't just represent one nation. It should represent all of us. It should represent humanity. You know, yes. our sure we haven't all gotten along. We've had mm -hmm. out issues with each other, but at the end of the day, we are all still human. Right. You know, mm -hmm. that is one thing we will always have in common with ourselves, our enemies, and so forth. Yes. I, and if you do choose to walk on the moon, try to. If you want to radio a message saying the eagle has landed. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Mm, you know what? It's funny because um, <laughs> it's kind of hypocritical if you're going to put an American flag on it just representing one nation, if you're going to say that, uh, you know, one big s whatever. Like, yeah, let's well, just well how, however you want to put it, it's up to you. Yeah, it's I, up I to you just, to decide. Yeah. And Melinda, <laughs> you, 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 you had nothing to say, so. Well, you know, this country is founded on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Including um, having um, individualistic ideal, so mm -hmm. it means you just think about yourself. If it's if it was a collectivist society, you would think about not only yourself, you think about your friends, your family, everyone else's um, well-being, and that's why we only have one flag up there. And we were also mm -hmm. competing with Russia, I believe, at the same time, so we can get there first, and we got there first. True, and you know, if we had a different way of thinking, then we would have a flag up there that represents, you know, mm -hmm. all of humanity. Right. Well, would you also put another flag on the moon in addition? Because I, I think I would. I would. I would. I would, but well, it would kind of well, be redundant. Would be the country no, it would be. It would suck because How what about? How would suck? No, Come here. no. Think about it like this. <laughs> yeah, so putting another flag up there, but the issue is, 
which flag is going to be up there. And what about the countries How about that, Canada? What about the countries that can't get their flags up on the moon? So it's going to be like, oh, yeah, um, China, um, England, uh, New Zealand, just countries like, for example, they're able to get like their flag up on the moon. But what about other like lesser countries? Mm -hmm. What about them? Are they not worthy enough? Well, they could be worthy in some yeah, ways. Yeah, that's why I would, this is me, mm -hmm. just replace the American flag. Be the bigger person, replace it with a universal flag. Replace Represent it. everybody. You know, keep one flag up there. Mm -hmm. Yes. But the problem just is, replace it. who is going to um, design that universal flag? I could get Betsy Ross from heaven and do that, mm -hmm. or I could do it myself. <laughs> well, that I would leave that up to the UN to decide. Mm -hmm. But, um... You know what? I'll honestly, I just have like a child rep. I would have a child draw it out. You know, someone mm -hmm. from St. Jude's. Like, hey, you want an opportunity of a lifetime? Draw me a flag. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that 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 would be my decision. You know. Uh, we're gonna go. Fly to the moon for a visit. Get some food up there. Plant some flags on the moon. And watch a commercial break. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be right back. <laughs> oh. Go, oh, go ahead. Do your thing. Get it. No, oh, wait, Sean, come back. Come I'm back. So get glad. Out of there. Nope, right. nope, nope, ah. nope. Welcome back. You know, the 60s was considered one of the most memorable decades in history that the world never forgot. However, the 70s may have been many things, but it sure wasn't a boring decade. I'll tell you this for sure. Now, we're, we're, and we could tell you more about Richard Nixon's presidency, which I'm pretty sure everyone was, was talking about during that time here. Mm -hmm. But Richard Nixon was remembered as the first and only president to ever resign from office. Nixon stepped down in 1974, halfway through his second term, rather than face impeachment over his efforts to cover up illegal activities by members of his administration in the Watergate scandal. Now, what are your views on Richard Nixon and what comes to mind about, to you about why he got involved in the Watergate scandal? Well, thank God this is public access. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm not a Republican. I don't particularly right. care for that party. Mm -hmm. They're, look, they are against a lot of human rights. You, you know, women, people of color, LGBTQIA. Mm -hmm. And their agenda is to just protect a very small percent of this country, which yeah. is if you're wealthy. Yeah. White. So I think that his agenda, again, is just catering to them, make, making sure that that tiny percent, which is, you know, the 1% or half a percent, mm -hmm. is, you know, all right. And if you are, unfortunately, lower <coughs> on the totem pole, you are screwed. Yeah, totally. He, like, he's been screwed since, ever since he became president here. And, because then he, you know, you have to understand that Republicans, they're also for themselves as well, in, in addition for the wealthy. They're not even for the middle class or the lower class. They just don't care, as you mentioned. But I don't know how they could not be against, they could be also be against the, um, the LGBT community. And, you know, that's one thing I should mention that will lead into what we'll be discussing next here. And it's... You know, it, it's not that hot, difficult here, but you could you could add on to what I have to say, Sean, if you want. Let him in. I like to stay away from politics. Oh, <laughs> oh, this is fun though for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> if we talk about Reagan, I will destroy that. <laughs> Reagan wins. <laughs> but here, here, there. As I mentioned, there is one thing I should lead to that we'll be discussing next. You know. 
Nixon, he has something to say about, in his argument about gays and lesbians, stating that gays are born that way. And he even continued on with a statement in newly released audio tapes from the White House from the late 70s. Now, let's watch and or listen to the Nixon tape. Here it is. Let me say something before we get off the gay thing. You know what my views misunderstood. I am the most tolerant person on that of anybody in this shop. They, they, have, a, they have a problem. They're born that way. You know that. That's all. I think they are. But the point is that Boy Scout leaders, YMCA leaders, and others bring them in that direction, and teachers. And if you look over the history of societies, you will find, of course, that some of the highly intelligent people, some of the Oscar Wilde, Aristotle, etc., 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 etc
Now, do you now do you think you would compare yourself to them, and or standing them with expressing themselves, expressing yourself and being proud of who you are as a person? Would you like stand with the LGBT community? I already, coming up? I already stand with the LGBT community, mm -hmm. and I remember. Um, now the thing is, a lot of people do get this wrong about me is that they think I'm gay just because like. I don't have an issue with gay people. Like I'm a supporter, so they're like, oh, mm -hmm. well, you're not against them, so I guess you're with them. And it's like, you know what? I'm with them, but but doesn't make me like one thing, you know. So I remember I used to I wanted to try to get into this school. It was called um, Harvey Milk High School. Uh huh. And the only reason why is because like I felt like accepted, you mm -hmm. know. Even though I w I'm not gay, like I still felt like I belonged up, uh, to that community, you know. Right. And uh, ever since then, I, I've still, I still am a part of the community. You know, mm -hmm. I go to the Pride Parade. You know, I attend the Hetrick Martin Institute. Uh -huh. uh, and yeah, I have a lot of gay uh, LGBTQ friends. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm a proud supporter of it. Yeah. And you know what? I, I will rock the flag proudly. Yeah. You should, you know, why don't you continue to rock the flag proudly, disco style here. Because mm -hmm. you know, disco. You, you know how 70s was disco's music yes, was like? absolutely. You know, disco music swept the nation with the 1977 film. I want to show you, just a moment, <laughs> Saturday Night Fever. There, yeah, huh? Just look at this. It starred John Travolta and launched a number of soundtrack containing five Number one hit singles, and one of them does include "Staying Alive" by the Bee Gees, and Stayin yes, alive, yeah, stayin "Staying Alive." Ha 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 ha! Alive! <laughs> <laughs> Don't die. Uh, well, we, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's "Night Fever" as well, as by also by the Bee Gees. But who also remembers "Disco Inferno"? Or like burn, baby, burn. Oh man, you know how I found out about that song is watching that '70s show. Yeah. <laughs> so you know oh that. Man, you know that, that was, was. You know that Saturday Night Fever was a big hit, su commercial success when it stayed at the top charts for six months. You know, mm. it's it's very interesting, don't you believe it? Yeah. You know, we all have to get some of this music on. Some of this does include like more than a woman. Oh and then man, that was it, yo! <laughs> I love that. God. Yeah, and then there's Boogie Shoes, and then there's Night on the Disc. There's a whole lot of songs from this album here. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's it's an old album, and if only if only I could play this, we'd be partying right now. Oh, you cannot forget about the Village People, though. Yep. You know, with hit songs oh, yes. such as Macho Man or. Y M C A. Yeah, yeah wait, like, dude, yeah, let, wait. Yeah. Let, let's try to all do this Those here. Are like, oh, why? I'm terrible at that. Well, I'm the M because my name. Yeah, tr tr <laughs> now try to make the M. I, I'm uh, doing the do Y right here. M? M? That's a W. Oh, I'm a C. But I feel I'm like I'm C. doing yeah. a gang well, sign right now. Well, I'm sorry. Hey, we could do Y M C Youth Media Channel. Yo, yes. Just Y M C. You know. They did find some, I tell you, tell us more about the village people. I would like, you know, because people have to understand. I mean, I don't, uh, honestly, those are the only two songs I love mm -hmm. that, like, that really drew me to them. I don't really know much of it. It's just like every, every throwback, like, party that you go to, those songs are going to be playing. And you, mm -hmm. I, I feel bad honestly not really knowing too much about them and it's like they're like staples in the community and like pillars that held up the disco world yes know? they sure did now who remembers also then there was a tv show back in the 70s it was like a mini series oh, called roots, roots. Yes. yes uh that's it yeah mm-hmm so I know that's that's a very important movie in black culture, black yes. history. Um, when I was younger, my parents, they still watch it. You know, at the time, it's hard for me to watch because it, it was a really brutal movie. Brutal it sure film. was. And it's very rare that 
they basically show slavery in that context because <coughs> we have today uh, slavery being watered down. People want to take it out of the textbooks and just forget about it. And it's like, no, you need to remember that this happened. Right. And uh, what I remember, they had a special called Queen where um, Holly Berry was in it. Yes. But <coughs> Roots was basically an American uh, television miniseries that mm -hmm. was introduced in 1979 and continuing from the years of 1882 all the way up into the 1960s. Mm -hmm. It focused on the fictionalization uh, story of the family of Alex Haley, who was an author, a black author, yes. and their lives in Henning, Laurendale County, Tennessee. Haley based this sequel to the 1977 miniseries on the last seven chapters of his book, Roots. Now you realize that's Roots, the next generation. There's that scene I will never forget. The here. whipping scene? Well, now there's a scene where they, where Malcolm X was in there. Alex Haley was played by James Earl Jones from that, from Roots, the series Roots, the Next Generation. And then they talked about Alex Haley and, um, uh, Mal Malcolm X, excuse me, um, mm -hmm. and then they show how he got assassinated, and it's it's like very brutal, and it's like it makes you want to like watch the movie Malcolm X with Denzel Washington because it's like based on the true story here. And then we also got to remember that there was also a 2016 American re miniseries remake of Alex Haley's novel Roots fr from the 1977, but that featured. Malachi Kirby, Forrest Whitaker, Lawrence Fishburne, and Jonathan Rise Mize. You know, the, that's just, we have to keep in mind with those characters. And the know. remake is also important because <coughs> it also, um, to explain this, it talks about um, how basically how black people behave now. It explains like the psychological context, which uh -huh. a lot of people don't pay attention to. Right. So. Yeah, that's basically what it is here, you know. I think it's time for all three of us to plant some roots here, don't you think? We're going to go and plant some roots and come right back. We'll be right back. I think Another commercial. Yep. <laughs> the best way to plant some roots is to change that goddamn flag. <laughs> <laughs> We're still traveling back in time to the events that have shaped us over the years that many of us remember from or that we have learned back then. And a lot has happened since then. Change from the attack of Pearl Harbor in 1941 that we recently discussed about briefly early in the show. And we're, go we're going all the way to today's world, but we have to make a Soul Train stop to the 80s. Yep. And <coughs> I'm pretty sure every one of us has remembered how good the 80s was here. Well, yeah. the 80s were good to me. It sure was. <laughs> Not because of soul. Now, don't get me wrong, I will always be a fan of soul. I mean, mm -hmm. just the baby making music yes. is enough to give anybody goosebumps. Well, but yeah. I'm talking about my kind of music yeah. that gave me purpose, that gave me inspiration. Right. Bands such as Nirvana. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Which, well, well, here's the thing. Would you like to see a clip of how the 80s was in yes. the beginning? Take a look. <laughs> Seven, six, five, four. We've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. Ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll. This is it. Welcome to MTV Music Television, the world's first 24-hour stereo video music channel. Now, just moments ago, all of the VJs and the crew here at MTV collectively hit our executive producer, Sue Steinberg, over the head with a bottle of champagne, and behold, a new concept is born. 
The best of TV combined with the best of radio. Now, starting right now, you'll never look at music the same way again. Yep. <laughs> if you're just curious, that was the premiere launch of MTV Music Television from August 1st, 1981, featuring MTV VJ Mark Goodman. It became the first 24-hour music video music channel that launched onto our television sets via Viacom Media Networks. And it literally changed our lives with the birth of music videos. Their very first music video ever played on the network was quite ironic. And that's Video Killed the Radio Star by the Buggles or the Bugles, however you want to pronounce it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> now, many of us know that the 80s music was like the original beat and everyone enjoyed listening to and watching. But do you think we're still looking at or experiencing the same way it was in the 80s compared to today? Mm. That's what Mark Goodman said. Are you talking about MTV in particular? Because or that's a reality show. Reality. And yeah. Yeah. Pregnant. 80s, 80s. Oh, reality. Teen 80s, mom. 80s. Pregnant at 16. <laughs> pregnant in 16 or 16 and pregnant, however you want to say it. 14 and pregnant. Well, I, the I real world. Play, but we're way. talking about the 80s music. Okay. Yes. They should put that back on MTV, though, because... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's, where's, where's yeah. the music on it? Yeah, because people called, want their MTV because yeah. it's the original channel. Yeah. It's called music television. I'm assuming that's what it stands for. Yes, it does. Yeah, but where's the music? Sure, Here's, you got VH1. Yeah, we have VH1 that came on mm -hmm. later on. Uh, it, uh, it Originally, VH1, uh, owned by Viacom, this is fucking terrible. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Well, look, VH1 came out in 1985, <laughs> obviously, at the start here. Yes, it After did. MTV. And their first music awards took place on September 14th, 1984. And it was hosted by Dan Aykroyd. And Dan you remember Aykroyd. him from, you know, Ghostbusters, of course. Yes. yes. And then there was, Dan, there was a Dan Aykroyd movie that called Neighbors, which he appeared with John Belushi as well from the 80s. So, but yeah. Um, yeah. You know, also in the 80s, besides music, we had, we had Virgin. Yeah. And, then, and, and who Not could so ever nice. forget, like a virgin played by Madonna in a <laughs> wedding gown? Like <laughs> That's just ironic. Like who, who would, who would sing a song yes. in a Sorry. wedding gown playing like a virgin? <laughs> like. <laughs> Lo siento. I, I don't <laughs> get it. Oh, uh, man, Madonna, man. She's just like the mother of all milfs, besides Stifler's mom. I'm sorry. She gave birth when? I'm just saying. <laughs> well, who, whenever she gave cougar. birth, but you know. She is <laughs> the cougar. Yes, I, I can agree. But well, obviously, oh, Cindy Lauper and Michael Jackson are also part of NTV, oh. obviously. Here. Oh, yeah, she won um, Best Female Video with her, you know, j Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Girls Just Want to Have Fun. That was also a Degrassi episode, a classic. Oh. Degrassi. Yeah. Oh, who, would ever, who, who, who would never forget Degrassi, you know? Oh. Degrassi, yes. and also around that time, the original series was going on, too. Yeah. That show, like, helped me through a lot because it actually dealt with real life, like, dramas and stuff. Yes. Like, told in story formats, but it it really, like, was touching a lot of nerves, you know, with, mm -hmm. like, youth and parents alike. Um, I don't know. What happened? We'll, we'll, we'll just continue. What are you doing? Oh, dear. The logo is gone. Yeah. Who touched it? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. <coughs> Somebody had a control. Somebody had a controller. Yeah. Damn. I did today though, but like, and it was. Girls just want to have fun. Yeah, I like it when someone else does it. It makes me feel awesome. I'll right. tell you what, we've had a good discussion. Yes. That's a wrap. See you next time. <laughs> on the spotlight. Mm.